Hey, welcome back, you guys. Welcome back to the channel. So today, I'm going to be working in a program that a lot of you are very familiar with, and I've actually used quite a few times on this channel, but I've never really done an in-depth dive into its quote-unquote usability um, for an artist, uh, and that program is called Procreate. Procreate was developed years and years ago um, as a drawing program uh, on the iPad. I believe it was might have been 2013, 2014, might have been earlier than that. And it was specifically designed uh, for the iPad. You can't get it on the desktop, you can't get it in Android, you can't get it on any of the other operating systems uh, out there, not on PC. It's specifically for um, iOS on the iPad. And it has developed into a wonderful drawing tool that a lot of professionals and novices alike um, use. I'm not going to do a huge deep dive into this program today because it's so robust. It has grown from just a simple drawing program to being able to do animation. And uh, we're not going to get into any of that. I'm just going to go through and I'm going to, I'm going to show you the interface. I'm going to kind of show you the ins and outs of what I think is usable uh, in the day-to-day -day operations um, uh, for me as an illustrator. I don't use Procreate uh, currently as a primary drawing tool. I use it as a sketch uh, tool to possibly do some sketches, um, maybe sitting on the couch or out on the, you know, out in the world. Whenever I can't lug my really heavy <laughs> PC or, um, you know, a, a specific drawing tablet. You know, the iPad has really come off in the past few years as being a super capable machine and with the Apple Pencil and and you hear this a lot because I, I've, I've watched a lot of videos on you know on YouTube in reference to the Apple Pencil versus the Wacom you know the Wacom Pro Pen 2 versus Intrig versus um, you know the PC's uh, AES technology uh, Active Stylus and you know, I, I've used pretty much all of them. The only, the only, now this is a caveat to that, but the only um, pen technology I have not used is the uh, the most current iteration of the Wacom Pro Pen 2, which ha has uh, 8,000 levels uh, of pressure sensitivity. <clears throat> and the pressure sensitivity thing is really, in my opinion, blown out of proportion because, you know, you always think that more is better, more is better. That That's the whole megapixel thing that, you know, we came into a few years back about the, um, you know, the megapixel myth and how you need so many megapixels to have a good picture and clarity. And a lot of times it has to do with the processing power. It has to do with the algorithm, algorithms that are used by the proprietary software inside the machine that formulate the picture that actually make the picture good. I mean, I think the iPhone has a 12 megapixel camera and routinely it beats out in terms of quality and processing and uh, just overall presentation than maybe the 25 or 30 megapixel uh, Android device. <clears throat> no offense against those who have Android devices. Um, I use uh, a Nikon uh, camera for my primary shooting, but if I'm out and about, uh, the iPhone does really well. Anyway, I digress. Procreate, as uh, I see it from an artist standpoint, um, you know, like I said, the iPad is a great tool. It's got great battery life, but we're not reviewing the iPad. We're gonna look at the program as I use it personally, which would be a sketch device. So enjoy the ride. Okay, so um, just to give you a little insight, this is my iPad Pro, it's 12.9 version. <coughs> Excuse me. And I've had this for a while. I think this is early 2019, uh, whenever I, this one uh, was given to me. It's given to me by a client. And uh, that's a very good thing. <laughs> um, you guys notice I've got this little rubber uh, sleeve on my pencil. I noticed that, you know, whenever I was drawing, a lot of times it would slip out of my hand. Even though it does have a textured surface, you know, the Apple Pencil, the Apple Pencil uh, does sometimes uh, slip out. Now, the previous model of this was longer and it was really slick. Um, and I had uh, some instances where my hand would fall asleep, which was very interesting. I don't know if, the, if that had to do how I was holding it. But uh, overall, <clears throat> the Apple Pencil uh, is a great, uh, a great option. So here's the icon for Procreate right here. So I launch it. 
and it comes into this window. If you've never used Procreate before, what you're going to have is you're going to get these predetermined uh, illustrations that you can see what is capable on uh, the iPad Pro. And you look and you're like, oh my gosh, it's incredible. And you know, the details that you get um, and, and the lighting effects and, and very similar to a Photoshop painting uh, that, um, you know, really has just a, a vibrancy to it. And it does look digital. Um, but, you know, as we go through, I'm going to show you that uh, this whole digital polished look, even though it's very popular right now because a lot of artists are doing it, is not the only option um, for you in Procreate. And it's funny how they pretty much did the same thing across a very painterly quality, uh, you know, of course that big blue splotch isn't supposed to be there. But uh, you can see the quality that you can get uh, in the iPad is literally um, as good, uh, if not better, than some desktop programs. <clears throat> the rendering engine for the brushes is very nice. Yeah, see, it's got some really nice glow effects and just simple, you know, simple painting, but you know, the blurring is really cool and the motion and you can get some really great effects in here. And that's what you're going to see whenever you first come in. I don't know if they've updated some of those, um, those uh, shots, but some of the stuff that I've done, <clears throat> you know, again, you got that blurring effect in the background, blurring effect in the middle ground, and uh, you go in and you, again, you've got some really nice textures um, that I put in there with the brushes uh, and, and some nice rendering effects that again are very nice. And, and these right here, you're like, wow, the grass looks incredible. These are brushes, <laughs> believe it or not. They're kind of like stamps. And the brushes uh, that you can get, um, you know, on Gumroad or some of those other uh, programs, or I'm, I'm sorry, uh, websites, um, are actually uh, very cool. I, I don't have all of my stuff in here because I got the 64 gig model. So I had to offload some of my stuff. Here's another piece I did. And this one, you can see some of the textures that I put in there, kind of like it's watercolor. And that has to do with the fact that you can put in different texture papers in here and import papers, which is really cool. Um, let's go to the other one here. I'll show you. Similar. So again, it's got that nice, uh, uh, sort of a painterly quality, but also kind of a, a brushy quality to it. And you can see the texture of the paper in here is really nice. Um, overall so these are pieces and you'd like this this right here it looks very complex and complicated but it's actually a brush <laughs> so don't think that you know this piece took me a ton of time to do <clears throat> and uh you know you know again looking at it and you can get nice blurring effects and uh you know the lighting effects you can get in this program so um and here's another one. And another really great feature is whatever you're working in Procreate, if you come over here to the uh, to the time lapse recording and you click the time lapse recording on here, then it actually, whenever you open up the document, it has already started recording what you're drawing. So if I were to push replay on this, it'll go through and it records your time lapse for you automatically, which is really cool. And you can and scroll through and see the whole process of your drawing from beginning to end which is really cool. And you can export as a 4K document. So if I were to go in and say, hey, I want to share this and I click the share icon, there's a myriad of different um, possibilities that you can export as right here. <clears throat> and you can do video and you can export time-lapse video, 30 seconds full length, and you can choose the, uh, the quality which you want to uh, export. Um, so what we're doing today, basically, is we're coming here. Okay, so we're here on our watercolor canvas, and this is a texture pack that uh, I got as part of a brush pack. So it came in as a layered file, and whenever I expand the layer grouping, you can basically decide on what textures you want, smooth, uh, super paper, hand-pressed, and you can combine these papers based on, and, and you can adjust the layer transparency. But I, I keep it on, um, I don't know, what was it on, Butcher? And I think I had it on hand pressed, yes. These two, and then of course, these are all, they all these all have a layer transparency to them. Um, 
So we'll come here, come here. And whenever you click on the end, now it doesn't do it as a group, a layer transparency as a group, it does it as an individual layer. And you can see, just like in Photoshop, you can choose what layer transparency you want and it will adjust in real time and you can see the effects of that particular layer adjustment as you go through and all these you can hide a layer just like you could in Photoshop so it's got a very um, friendly uh, user interface that I think is really applicable to those who are either industry professionals or if you don't really know a lot you open the program up and you uh, you know you get just a simple layers palette <clears throat> so if I were to go back let's go back and I were to say instead of choosing one of these vintage papers I'll just say hey I want to start a new document I hit this little icon over here right and I can choose which resolution I want I can go 4k I can go square 20 uh, 48 by 2048 or I can do the screen size typically I'll do screen size just because boom and it has a, a default is uh, gonna be white for the background color so I like drawing on gray so we'll do that now let's go back I want to show you something this is something that happened okay it doesn't do it anymore and of course if I want to name it I go back and I can click it once and I just name fun sketch done click on it <clears throat> now let's get to the brushes so actually let's do the interface first so i showed you the layers palette over here it automatically creates a layer for you whenever you open a new document and it doesn't have anything on it um you know i had somebody ask me before how do you get your drawing off the background layer well that's easy just create a new drawing and there's a layer transparency already there so it's like you're drawing in space um so then let's go over to the eraser so let's say if I were to draw something, boom, and I want to erase something, I can click this icon here and I can start erasing. Or I can double tap my pencil, one, two, and it switches back and forth, one, two, one, two. So it goes back and forth between the eraser and the pencil. And um, just so you know, whenever it comes to undos, Typically, I would have an XB pen remote or a Wacom remote on the left-hand side that is connected to the interface of the computer, and I would use quick keys to, you know, control Z, control Z, control um, option uh, Z, or something like that whenever it comes to, um, you know, doing quick keys. So, unfortunately, uh, Procreate does not support uh, peripherals like that, so you have to use your hand gestures. So, basically, to undo, I would hit two and then to redo it would be three these are things that you have to quote unquote learn and then once you do learn them it's really cool because you know when you get into the program and you realize how intuitive the program actually is <clears throat> over here is brush size so if i have a standard brush size here i can make it larger and the apple pencil is pressure sensitive so the harder i push obviously the darker it's going to be also two three also whenever it comes to this particular brush let's go here uh, i can adjust a lot of things in the brush now we're not going to get into all this because i don't want to get mired down in all the details because it, you get overloaded and you're like holy crap i can do stroke path taper shape grain you can and at the end of the day, you can you can have custom brushes in here, and you can export, and you can import different uh, bitmaps and TIFFs and stuff like that as a basis, the grain source. Uh, but I don't want to get into that because what inadvertently happens, at, at, you know, as a beginning user and an artist that really doesn't have a lot of um, experience with programs like this, is you get overloaded and then you start you start not wanting to get into the program anymore. So. Whenever you first get Procreate, it comes with it comes with these these brushes right here. So sketching all the way down to water, I believe. Everything above sketching right here, all the way up, these are all custom brushes. Brushes that I've imported, brushes that I've created, brushes that I've purchased. 
you know, like I said, you can go on different websites and purchase brushes. One of the great resources that I found, here, let me get rid of some of these things. Okay. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Okay. So one of the great resources that I found for Procreate brushes is going to be <clears throat> this. Um, you know, Procreate brushes.com. And it's got a great collection. So let's say you want to do drawing. You bring up drawing and it, you bring up this whole myriad of collection of brushes that you can purchase. So let's say I want to do Gene Sketch All. I click on this. I look here. You read. It gives you, typically it'll give you an example. But what I'll do is I'll look on here. I'll click the icon and it brings me to the price. So $79, $15, $14. Some of them are cheap. Some of them are really expensive. You have to understand that it takes time to create brushes like this. And, you know, the investment that you'll get. Let's say I want to do cats and rats. <clears throat> Brings it up. It gives you an overview. And typically it'll give you an example. So let's scroll through. It, and the person using the brushes has created these illustrations. So it gives you an example of artwork and, and, and stuff that you can create with them, which is really cool. Right? So that's only $5. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and get out of here. So again, you know, having the brushes is great, but it's only a tool. And I don't want to get, you know, like I said, mired down in uh, the whole brush aspect of Procreate. <clears throat> okay. So drawing. Aspect you know, what is, what good does this program do me as an artist? You know, if I've got Photoshop and, uh, whoops. See, I was trying to use my XP pen remote. That's funny. Okay. And, and the opacity here's, here's your size slider right here. You know, really small. And here is your opacity slider over here. So the hardest I'm going to push hard and you can see the layer as it, as it builds up layers, it gets darker and darker, similar to real drawing and paint. And I can go really light, but I typically keep it at a hundred percent. And then I allow, let's do this two, three, and I allow my pressure to dictate, you know, this is really soft, right? See, again, what makes the iPad really powerful and procreate is the fact that the pressure sensitivity is so good and there's no latency at all. And since the screen, underlying screen is bonded to the glass, the parallax, which is the distance between the cursor, uh, LCD screen or retina, and the top where your pen touches is extremely thin. So you're not going to get any latency and that wiggle that happens with Intrig. So let's do a diagonal test. There's no wiggle at all. So let's put this on here. No wiggle. <laughs> um, what I did notice though, and this is one of the things that, you know, you have to remember with palm rejection, a lot of times you might get, see how my knuckle hits, you know, I'm drawing and I'll hit this and then I'll bring it in. And what'll happen is you'll get a little false positive. You can solve that by using a glove um, or turning palm uh, and touch off. But if you turn touch off, you're not going to be able to do the hand gestures. So I recommend you keep it on and just watch how you draw uh, and, and placement uh, of your hand on the pen. And also for those of you who do have, you know, knuckles in the way you draw and you're getting false positives, then definitely wear a glove. Okay. <clears throat> so let's get into uh, a little bit of drawing here as I have talked for the past few minutes. iPad. You know, I remember back whenever this thing came out, and, and Procreate was already on here. Um, and the fact that, you know, Apple was getting into the whole drawing uh, genre, um, you know, even though they had been in the drawing genre for years with, you know, being able to hook up your Cintiq tablet uh, or one of the other peripheral tablets to your MacBook Pro. And now they were creating sort of a device that you know, did away with the whole laptop synergy situation that most artists are, were used to drawing. 
<clears throat> with now I had a, uh, a MacBook Pro back in the day and I drew on an Intuos tablet so I had my Intuos tablet right here and I had my MacBook Pro right here and I would sit here and draw uh, on my Intuos tablet and it was were great it was fantastic and I really enjoyed it and eventually they started you know coming out with uh, different programs or not programs different uh, computers that had touch screens and I remember whenever the first one came out which was the surface um, which was actually later than the other uh, tablets that came out you know maybe the Cintiq Companion or the uh, or like the mod book which was a MacBook Pro that had a, a Cintiq bonded to it and it was an all-in-one it was like five grand and I was like man I need that but I got the Surface, and I remember the Surface was so incredible because it had that wonderful pin, and I could use full applications, and it was just a wonderful uh, program, uh, a com not a program, but a wonderful combination um, between drawing on my Cintiq and, let me do this, I'm trying to draw and speak here, drawing on my Cintiq um, and having the portable of a uh, laptop, and Man, I remember I, I, the, the Apple iPad came out, and they were running Procreate, and I went to the Apple Store, and I started drawing on it, and I was comparing it with my Surface, <clears throat> and I was actually I was disappointed because at the at the time the price point was so much money it was like oh gosh it was a thousand dollars or nine hundred dollars, and I had my Surface. And I think I had paid like four or five hundred dollars for it, and I could run full applications. I could run full Photoshop on it, and <clears throat> I just remembered saying to myself, "Dude, I will never get an iPad Pro because they're so it's it's ridiculous. Why would I pay that mon much money for a device that is lacking in capability?" And of course, you know, me being who I am, eventually everybody was posting these incredible images that they've that they've done on the iPad Pro using Procreate. And I thought to myself, man, I got Maybe I, I was a little hasty. So um, a client ended up buying me, buying me an iPad. <clears throat> and, you know, I started really doing a deeper dive. Now, I had, had iPads before, um, you know, that had the standard non-Apple Pencil. And I was using the, um, I think it's the Adonit Jot. And the Adonit Jot, it was good for its time, but eventually, man, once you get a hold of this Apple Pencil, it's it's a light years uh, above what the Adonit Jot was. The Adonit Jot was basically uh, a Bluetooth connected, and it would use the pressure sensitivity, but it had this little plastic nib on the end that was a circle, and you would draw, and you would push down, and it was spring-loaded, and it was just, uh, it was so convoluted, and it just didn't work uh, as well as you would like, and I was never satisfied with it. But whenever I was finally able to sit down, get over myself, and uh, mess around with the iPad uh, Pro, I was able to finally understand what all the um, the hubbub was about. So drawing, what br first of all, what brush am I using? This is a really good thing about this particular program on the iPad. Um, you can import your Photoshop brushes. So if you look at a lot of these, like uh, this set right here, direct literally directly I imported it from my Photoshop uh, archive and it that showed up as all my brushes from Photoshop which is really cool you know these particular brushes if you look where are they at go all the way up yes yeah, you've got watercolor in here watercolor is really pretty um, let's see go down one of my favorite brushes is actually this brush right here, the Pastel C from my new A brushes. A brushes has to do with uh, the brush, these brushes I received for free from um, uh, a website called Creature Art Teacher. And Creature Art Teacher is the brainchild and creation of uh, Aaron Blaze. Aaron Blaze, uh, animator, illustrator, uh, concept designer, director. Um, and he created this brush and this is his main brush that he uses whenever he draws and it's great because it's got texture it's got uh you know really good flow and it's got a really good pencil quality to it that is hard 
to find uh, in any brush set. And what's really cool is it works in Procreate too. So <laughs> um, what am I doing right now? I'm just literally flushing in, talking, and just doing some sketch work, uh, you know, for you guys to show you how intuitive it is. Now you see, I'm using two fingers to move stuff around, and then I use two fingers to zoom in and out, right? This is the base gesture to which you will have to learn whenever you're starting to use this program. <clears throat> so you see I'm moving it around. Normally I would have, like I said, a, a quick key remote and I would be pressing space bar to move stuff around. And, and literally my muscle memory keeps wanting to go over to my XP pen remote. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna move that out of the way. Um, let's give him a little fang. Let's go ahead and make that a little bit smaller. And one of the really cool things too, this is one of the things that, you know, if you go in and you'll start really getting into the minutia of the program itself, you know, it, it has what's called a line straightener. It helps you with circles. And, you know, like I said, I'm not getting into all the really heavy details of this program, but let's say you want, like, I want to draw a straight line. Oh, I can't do it. Oh, I, oh, why can't I draw? Oh, why can't I draw a straight line? Procreate has something really cool where you basically, you draw your straight line, you're, oh, and then, you know, you're like, oh, I can't quite get a straight line, and then, boom, it'll straighten it for you. So that's really cool. And another thing it does, if you were to do a circle, you know, I draw circles all the time. That's not a bad circle, right? But Procreate does something really cool. And it'll correct it for you. And then you can size it up and down, which is really cool. Okay. <clears throat> but as a sketch tool, whenever I'm sitting here drawing, I'm just literally plugging, plugging away at my drawing as an artist. Maybe I'm sitting on the couch, right? I've got my drawing in front of me. Um, just having some fun. And what's really cool too about uh, Procreate is it supports tilt. So depending on the brush you're using, this particular brush does have tilt. So we can put it over on its side. We can have a really skinny line. Let's go ahead and do this. And then whenever I tilted it over on its side, it has like a sketch quality. I'm not sure this particular brush has tilt on it. So we're gonna go down here to the pencils, sketching. The 6B pencil is really nice. I've used this in many drawings. I don't think it's that one. Sketching, drawing, pencils. Drawing, we're gonna drawing. Sketching, where's it at? The HB pencil, technical pencil, is it that one? It might be that one. Yes, it is that one. So what's really cool, like I said before, is here's my pencil. So I'm drawing with my pencil. La -di -da -di -da -di -da -da -da. So let's draw a circle. Now I want to shade it. So I tilt it over on its side and it literally now is just like a piece of graphite. In the traditional sense. Wonderful, just a wonderful uh, tool. But I like using, at least for now, until I go ahead and, and do the, uh, there's my A brush. That's what happens. You get too many brushes. Where's it at? No, no, pass that sleep. Uh, I think I modified that one. <laughs> Anchors. What did I do with it? There we go. New A brushes. Okay, we'll go back to pastel C. Okay. <clears throat> so moving around, just really toying around with Procreate is the best, in my opinion, is the best way you're going to learn how to use this program. We're going to push back the. Uh, Now what you can do 
and this is something that I've noticed a lot of um, professionals do, is they'll do their sketch work in Procreate, and then they'll export as a PSD document, which is perfectly fine, you know, in the context of the workflow. You know, just like if you were to use uh, Procreate uh, as your sketchbook, right? Whenever I was teaching over at uh, the college, I had numerous students that basically used um, the iPad Pro and the, you know, the sketch archive gallery as their sketchbook. And, you know, they would, they would do the, you know, I had one student that did his entire, his entire classwork on the iPad Pro. So it, you, you have that capability um, to do, you know, professional work with this, but, you know, you always have to realize especially whenever it comes to the Apple uh, ecosystem, is you will be bound to that ecosystem. And they've gotten a lot better at being friendly with other computers. But, you know, I've found times whenever I want to do certain things and I just, it's harder because, you know, I'm so used to doing it one way that eventually I start getting frustrated. And there we go. go ahead. Maybe he's got some spike dudes on here. I get a little frustrated and I just I, I just want to go back to my comfort zone. And that's not necessarily a good thing. I'm always a huge proponent on this program of using you know the tools to the best of your advantage and trying something new. Okay. He's a cute guy, isn't he? <clears throat> Let's do his little nose right here. Okay. Okay. So those of you, I've had a couple people that have asked me and they say, hey, you know, Mike, what, um, what size iPad should I buy? And my answer is always going to be the, the biggest one you can afford. I had the 11 inch iPad Pro and it was a great device. Uh, you know, Apple Pencil support. I've done quite a few pieces on there. And one of the things that I was constantly running into was real estate. You know, I run, I, I work uh, on a Cintiq um, 22 HD, which is not the biggest one that, that, uh, Wacom makes. Wacom makes all the way up to, I believe to a 32. Um, but I had worked on a 21 UX for almost 10 years. And whenever I first started working on the surface, I, I had kind of issues because I felt like I was cramped. You know, you ever felt that way whenever it comes to art, you're cramped and it just doesn't feel right. You know, I'm a big, again, proponent of things feeling right. And, you know, I, I finally got a hold, like I said, uh, my first um, my first exposure to it was not very positive to the iPad Pro uh, 12.9. And then, <clears throat> you know, using the, the, the smaller iPad, it gave me a really good understanding and, and, and appreciation for the ecosystem. So then whenever I got the 12, I was like, yeah, this is it. I, I won't be going back to a smaller iPad. You know, 12 is the way to go, 12.9. You know, if they came out with a larger iPad, like an iPad Pro X or a Pro level and charged, you know, 12, you know, $1,500 for it, and they, you know, went in and, and you were allowed to attach keyboards and do quick keys and stuff like that, that would be fantastic. You know, I say that, that that Procreate doesn't support quick keys. I really don't know if they do because it was originally designed for hand gesture interface. But uh, I think, you know, I got it like this. I need to have that grass come out a little bit further. I think that uh, if it did, man, I would be all in. Okay. Just some simple stuff here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you guys on time lapse because I'm going to ink this and then I'm going to go to the next stage of the uh, Procreate process, which is going to be the color process. And the color process is really cool because Procreate does something that uh, other programs don't do. And you're going to see, you're going to see the process here. I don't know if I want to go like a really thick line. 
you know, because that would make the inking process a little bit smoother. I'm not really a, a smooth ink kind of guy. I don't know if you guys can understand or appreciate that. I like things a little bit rough. You know, see his little I don't even know if you'd be able to see those because it's three quarter view and there's a lot's hidden. But I don't know. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put you guys on time lapse to let you see. Now my apologies that I didn't do a screen recording, I did a video recording instead. So, um, hopefully I'll be able to utilize the, uh, the time-lapse. See, we've just been drawing. So we're going to go over here to the time-lapse replay for video and we're going to see what happened. So you can understand how powerful this tool can be, especially if you want to post things to social media, if you're creating video content for a YouTube channel, if you're trying to teach a tutorial, if you're trying to do these things, the time-lapse replay is automatic. You don't have to go in and, and you know click something every single time you go into the program. If you set it up once, it's going to treat every file the same way. I've got it set to record 4K and um, at X amount of, I think it's 60 frames per second. So whenever I export this, the quality is gonna be very good. So what I'm gonna do, really quick, see I see a false positive right there. Remember that double tap? Goes back, free eraser. So I'm gonna go ahead and put you guys on time-lapse. You can watch the inking process so you're not bored. And then I'm gonna go ahead and once I get the inking process in, I'm gonna bring you back. We're gonna show you how to quickly put in color uh, on Procreate. Okay, so I have the ink lines in. <clears throat> you can see that I still have the sketch that you can see. And typically, if I were to go and do my normal methodology, I would leave the sketch in slightly because I like to have that sketch in there to give it a little bit of life. So there's there's one really there's a couple ways that you can fill in color. <clears throat> you can take your pencil or whatever device you're doing. Let's pick a nice kind of mid-tone or mid-hue green here. And you go in and color. Let's go underneath. Let's create a layer. That's going to be our color layer underneath. And you can go in and you can start blocking in your color, which is really cool. Okay. That's kind of the traditional way. And if you want kind of a painterly feel, depending on the brush that you utilize. Now what happens is if you decide to do that and you start getting near the edges, you're gonna have some bleed over. So instead of doing that, Procreate does something really cool. So let's delete, create a layer again. I'm gonna to go to the layer that has the ink on it. I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna hit it once. And you see all these different layer actions. You can uh, create a layer mask, you can, have a clipping mask, you can make a, a alpha lock, you can add, you know, for transparency, you can have a fill layer, you can copy select, all those other things. But what I want to do is I want to use that as a reference layer. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize one of the really cool features in Procreate, which is the autofill feature. You're like, autofill? What is that? <laughs> so I've got my selected color. I didn't quite like that color whenever I put it down the first time. So we're gonna go ahead and make it right about there. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this little icon over here. First, I'm gonna click on this. And one of the things you can do with the color palette is you can mount it, which is really cool. You didn't used to be able to do that. So now I've got my colors right here. So now I'll click that. And I'll drag this over and I'll release it. And what it's doing is it's utilizing this particular layer as its reference layer. So it doesn't mess up my sketch. You see that? So if I were to come and I were to turn that reference layer off and I were to come back and I were to do the same action, but with that off, it's gonna fill the entire area. 
So I'm not going to do that. Again, I'm going to use that as a reference layer. I'm going to go to the layer underneath. And I'm just going to start plugging in my green color. And it fills it in. Lickety split. Now, there is something called a threshold, which will determine how far your, your color fill will go into or next to your black. So to determine that, what you need to do is you'll come here and you'll hold it and you see this color drop threshold. Now, if I were to bring it all the way over here, it's going to go past the black. But I like to keep it where it is at default, right in the center. And what it's going to do is it's going to go just a little bit past underneath, probably to right about there underneath to where you can see. You see that? It goes just past underneath to where it fills it in nice and solid. Okay. Now it's important that you have your drawing, uh, I call it cinched up to where the lines meet and you don't have color or uh, fill gaps to where like right here, that color can actually bleed. Similarly, if you were to take something uh, and have a hole in it, it'll just bleed out everywhere and you don't want that. So make sure that your color, um, your, your black and white line, your line work is nice and cinched up. Okay, so let's do this last part back here. See, in a very quick order, you can have something filled in that looks pretty decent. So now I'm gonna make, since his, eye, since his eyes uh, are gonna be a little bit lighter, let's go ahead and push that up slightly. Okay, let's make this, those dark, like a dark hue. Boom, boom. Okay, and his hair is the same way. I haven't decided if I want that hair to stay that color. <laughs> yeah, that looks pretty good. So then his teeth are going to be kind of off yellowish. Yeah, right about there. Same thing with his eyes, too. And literally, in very quick order, using this program, you can have something that looks pretty decent. And you're like, oh my gosh, I forgot. I forgot to do... The feet, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? The end of the world, blah, blah, blah. I can't remember the color, what am I gonna do? It's very easy, take your finger, put it down, oops, and it color selects back to that color and you can just literally, see, I had a, a lightly, or a, um, I had an opening. Let's find out where the opening is. Okay, we'll go back to here, here, black, Look around. Yeah, see right here. Whoops. Right there's the issue. Croak. Okay. See, I, had, I didn't fill that in good enough. And that makes a big difference. Because you can have a mess. You can create a mess. Let's look over here. Make sure we didn't do anything over there. That looks pretty good. Oh, I can already see one right there. Okay. All right, let's go back. Press this. Good, we got our color, and fill. Okay, and fill, fill, fill. And if you don't wanna wait, you can just take your pencil and put that in there like that. Okay, um, let's go ahead and do the little peripheral areas here. His little horns. Let's do, make those a little bit greener, a little bit darker. Okay, yeah, here we go. Not a lot of contrast there. Hmm, I really like that color. Uh, let's go back over here, let's do that. Yeah, a little bit different. You want some variety in your art, in your drawings. So you don't want to keep using the same colors, but you don't want to go too far outside of the color palette, and suddenly you realize you're lost and your drawing no longer has a cohesive presence to it. The colors need to work together. And literally, instead of sitting there doing this and worrying about the lines, 
I can, in quick order, what is that? Let's try that again. There we go. Two, three. And this is kind of the, I, I, you know, quote unquote, tedious way of doing things. Because I, I like drawing. <laughs> and this is just literally filling in color. But if this gets me to where I need to be, then that's fine. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Make sure we're on the right layer. Good. So now we're going to go ahead and put in some of those lighter yellowish hues, kind of green. Good. Right there. Good. 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 Yeah. It's looking pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and color in the dark. Good. Good. And then finally, a little bit of white. Oh, no, we're not going to do white. Let's give him some gray. I want to say blue. Blue eyes. There we go. He's got blue eyes. There we go. Okay. And <clears throat> green. Let's give him like a, a rusty red shirt. There we go. I like that. That's good. Okay, and his backpack. Backpacks, we've got green, we've got red, we've got blue. <clears throat> Excuse me, let's do... Like a tan, like a neutral. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I don't like that. A little bit darker, a little bit browner. I thought it was too close in... in in hue to the bottom part of his tail, and I don't like, I like variety. No, that's not bad. Okay, so now you have his rainbow hat. So we're gonna do bright yellow, 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 green, red, blue, and we'll do purple. Okay. And these will, of course, be gray. Gray, gray, gray. And you see, very quickly, you can have a decent piece of artwork that looks pretty nice, even, you know, even with minimal effort here. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's just put in his toenails. Okay, and then finally, what I can do is since he's on one layer. Now, if I wanted to, I could have had everything separated. Oh, <clears throat> I didn't want to do that. I wanted everything on one layer because I want to show you something I'm going to do here in a second for shadowing. So let's create a new layer. Again, this is the reference layer. So everything that I do on any of the other layers that I, that I create, it's going to use this reference layer whenever I go to fill. Okay, actually, I did forget something. Okay, so let's go here, here. Now let's say you're doing this quickly and you go, oh, oh, what did I do, what did I do? Just take your two fingers, hit it, and you're good to go, okay? Not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. And to fill in some of those white areas is always better than to just leave them. So I'm gonna go back to the other layer that I created. I'm gonna choose a kind of a Yellowish, greenish, olive hue. I'm gonna come back down. I'm gonna fill that in. I'm gonna fill that in. Do that. Okay. I'm gonna have this a little bit lighter. One, two, three, four. Okay, so he's looking pretty good, right? So now I'm gonna come and I'm going to turn that off reference layer so I hit it once. And I can also, if I just wanna keep my pencil in my hand, I can click it once, I'll click that off. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make that the reference layer. 
reference and I'll add a layer. Okay, now we're gonna get into something a little bit more advanced. And advanced meaning you have to understand, you don't have to understand, you just have to be open. <laughs> open to learning something. Um, if you're familiar with Photoshop, you understand there are layer transparencies. Layer transparencies have to do with how the layer on top interacts with the layer on the bottom. What I typically, I, I don't know the, the exact scientific terminology of how multiply is, but if you have a darker color on top of, on top of a, um, a color on the bottom, it has a transparency effect, and depending on the color it is, like if it's dark or whatever, it actually multiplies that particular color, color underneath as the shadow. So if I were to use black, uh, which I don't like using as a shadow, it would actually multiply on top of that, depending on how transparent that transparent that layer is to effectively make that underlying hue uh, darker using the black. So I don't like doing that. I like using, let's go into multiply. I like using different um, colors. So like a purple. Okay. So the purple will actually interact with the green underneath. Oh, we're down here it'll interact with the green underneath. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna change my brush because I want it to have kind of a textured feel. You guys have seen my work. If you've seen my work before, you know how I like having the texture feel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back up to this brush up here. Where's it at? A brush, new A brushes. And again, these brushes right here, if you're interested in getting these brushes, not only for Photoshop, I've had a, quite a few people ask me about these brushes, but also for Procreate, they're on the Creature Art Teacher website, sign up for the newsletter. Um, so look up creatureartteacher.com, sign up for the newsletter, you'll get a free PDF showing elephants, and also you'll get this brush pack, which has the pastel C brush in it. So let's look. Okay. Reference layer. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create, so we're gonna turn that off as reference layer because that has to do with drop and fill, okay? So um, I'm gonna create a mask, uh, a, a clipping mask, and it's gonna basically use the bottom layer that it's on top of as the reference layer. So if I were to draw something, it's not gonna go outside the lines. You see how that works? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this brush a little bit bigger and I'm just gonna start putting in some shadowing here and there. Give it a little bit of texture on that texture brush. Gives it a little bit of variety. And I'm not going in and pushing hard because look what happens whenever I push hard. And again, I'm using that purple hue. So it's not, I'm not killing the color. I'm just bringing out what is already, um, what is already there. So you don't ever want to use black. And if you do use black as a shadowing element, make sure they use it very sparingly. The same thing goes with whites and highlights. If you were to go in and start using a bunch of white for your highlights, you would, you would see very quickly that the color will be killed because white, you know, it just kills the color. Okay, so that's pretty good. So go ahead and we'll go back up here. Now we're ready to put in some of the shadowing um, on this particular guy. Now, one of the things that I wanna do before I get in here <clears throat> is I wanna select a, a particular color. So let's go ahead and put Whoops. Kind of locks it in place there. Okay, so now what I want to do is uh, select a specific color on the layer that I'm on. So to do that, typically in Photoshop, what I would do is I would take my pen and I would go with the magic wand. So Procreate has something very similar to that. A little wand over here. Look at the tabs up top. So you click on this particular little ribbon looking thing and a sub menu comes up from the bottom and it says automatic. Now you could do a couple things with this, but for our purposes, we're just going to keep it really simple. I'm on the layer that I want to select 
and there's a specific color that I want to select. I have it on automatic. Now, in the in in here, you can do things in such a way that um, you can do it freehand. If you want to do freehand, if it's an intricate detail, you can do rectangles. You can create an ellipse. You can do a color fill. You can clear something. You can copy and paste something. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on that area. Now it turns blue because that is the selection area and it wants to show you what you're selecting. Okay, so I've selected that color. Now I take my pencil and I come back up here to the pen and you see it's got these diagonal lines. I'll go ahead and zoom in. You can see the diagonal lines. Now everywhere the diagonal line is happening is where it's not selected. So I'm gonna take my pencil. I've got a color that I want, which is this pretty blue right here. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I've got the pastel C. That's the brush that I want. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make little stripes on here. Okay, let's go ahead and make that a little bit smaller. And we're gonna push that up a little bit. Creates a nice little, make that a little bit wider. Okay. <clears throat> Pretty cool. So now let's go ahead and see if I can do it a little bit darker, a little bit smaller. And give him like a, a ringer. For those of you who don't know that terminology, that's whenever you have your collar and your shoulder element here. that is a solid color, okay? And to get out of here, all you do is basically, you press the little ribbon icon and everything disappears once again. Pretty cool, huh? So now let's go back to our layers. We're gonna start putting in our shadowing for the creature. I don't know what his name could be. Hmm, Simon, his name is Simon. So let's go ahead, we're gonna add a layer. Remember how we did the layer clipping mask up here? Cause I don't wanna go in and start drawing willy nilly. I want it to all stay in the confines of the drawing of the color. So I've got my layer up here. I click on it once, I go over here to the clipping mask and now I have a nice clipping mask that I can go in and put the shadows in effectively. Okay, so I like the pastel C, but I'm gonna try a different brush. Let's try pastel B. That's pretty good. We're gonna go back to our purple hue. And we're gonna go back to here, layers. We're gonna click on it once, and we're gonna go over to multiply. Okay, because it's gonna multiply that underlying uh, color. So let's go ahead and really, I don't like that. It doesn't, it's got a very sporadic. Yeah, that's much better. We're gonna push that back a little bit. Okay, and what we're doing now is just literally going in, and I like to call it drawing sculpting. I'm sculpting and feeling, and what's cool is, whenever I've got a little bit of um, opacity choked back, I can go back over the shadow layer to make it even darker, because it's again, you're, you're utilizing that underlying value and multiplying it. So let's go ahead and see the light upper right hand corner. It's going to be a little bit darker over here. Good. Make that brush quite large. Okay. Again, there's a myriad of ways that one can go about doing this particular action. This is just the way that I do it, right? This is very similar to how I work in Photoshop. Still keeping things loose, eh, it's too dark. Keeping it loose. Make that a little bit 
bit smaller. And I'm going to show you. And, and two, I don't have to worry. Look, I'm not like, see how it stays in the line? That has to do with the clipping mask. You can see how, you know, you're sitting there on the train, you know, you're on a train, who goes on a train anymore, honestly? You're sitting there on the bus, you're sitting there in a car, you're in traffic, you know, maybe you're carpooling, going to your studio office, going to your studio job, and, you know, whatever you're doing. Or you have your iPad, you're, you're in a library, and, you know, you can sit there and the pressure sensitivity of the iPad really is wonderful. You can get some great values here without having, you know, and if you do mess up, oh, crap, oh, man, what am I doing? You just hit two and you're good to go. You know? Let's make it bigger. Okay, he looks pretty good. Let's do this. And with that purple value that I'm shading with, it's not killing the color. You're not like destroying it. Okay. Yeah, Procreate is a wonderful artist tool that if you don't know and you've never used it, I highly recommend at least going to the Apple Store, plopping down for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, getting in there, drawing something fun, you know, impressing everybody around you or making a fool of yourself. I, I do that regularly, by the way, make a fool of myself. Probably doing that right now, right? Get a hundred comments. What the heck, man? Thought you were a PC dude. No, I'm a drawing dude. And I, my primary machine is a Macintosh. Because as much as I love my PCs, I haven't had the best of luck with reliability with them because of the whole having to update stuff all the time. And it's not the best work machine for me. And I'm sure that there's lots of people that would dis, you know, would disagree. So now I've got the major, he's not too contrasty. I don't really want him to be that contrasty. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch brushes and I'm going to show you where the iPad Pro with, or iPad Air with Apple support, with Procreate as a artist tool really starts to shine because the brush libraries that you guys have, and even the ones that come with it are very robust. So let's go back to sketching. We're gonna go back to that HB pencil and I'm gonna make it quite large. Okay, again, we still have our purple hue. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna tilt it on its side just slightly. Whoops, like right here. And I can get, again, I get some really nice shading. And it's the closest thing that I have found. You know, you can even go over on its side here. That I have found that's in the market that is the closest thing to a pencil shade. And those of you who are looking, whoops, that's really dark. For something. Can really look at this and go, man, that's really cool. So I'm just trying to literally show you the options here. So then if we wanted to do like chalk, we can do chalk. It's got a nice feel to it. You know, give it some texture. If we want to go, let's say, speckles, maybe he's been walking through stuff. You know, you could put speckles on him, um, but I'm not going to do that. I, I didn't want to get too deep into the, the like I said, the, the intricacies of the brush palette here. So then we're going to go ahead. We're going to create another layer. Okay. 
And again, we're going to do clipping mask. And it still uses this underlying layer. It doesn't use the one directly under it. It doesn't use a clipping mask as your reference. So again, I can start putting in highlights. Actually, you know what I'm going to do before that? I'm going to go ahead and put in my eye highlight because it always helps me. I don't know if it helps you, but it definitely helps me whenever I start doing work smooth like butter. Yeah, we're going to put a little bit of a little bit of eye shine in here. Okay. There we go. So we're going to go ahead back to our layer mask or clipping mask that we have. And we're going to go ahead and uh, make it go to our layer transparency effects here. <clears throat> Where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? Uh, we're going to do overlay. Okay, an overlay, again, will put, uh, depending on what you do, a warmer color on top, and it helps bring the highlights out uh, of that color. So I'm going to color my overlay color instead of making it white. Again, I don't like using white because it, that kills color. A little bit warmer. Mm, right about there. And we're going to go back to, you know what brush I really like? Where is it at? It's in painting and gouache. The gouache on here is wonderful. See, it's got a nice texture to it. So I'm going to go ahead and choke back on the, um, on the opacity because I don't want it to like kill everything. And I'm just going to start putting in some highlights here and there. And since it's on that layer with that layer transparency, if I want to hide that layer at any time to kind of see the underlying local color, I can. That works out really nice. I'm really ginger with it right now because I don't want to go in being heavy handed at all. What's cool, here I'll show you, with that warm, you're basically taking the light and you decide on what color the light is, right? So I'm going to go over this tone, or this value, oops, I'm sorry, this value right here, and it's going to basically be a warm light on top of that, on top of that hue. Okay, a little bit of highlight here. Good. That's going to be on top. <laughs> He's kind of funny. Yep, got a little bit of light here. that a little bit bigger. Go ahead and put in that warm light here. A little bit on top of his tootsies. Okay. He's like, why hello? And he's got a an Austrian accent. Why hello? Now, and I literally, I can sit here and draw just doing the intricacies, just doing the little bit here and there, just making it a little bit. It's, it's all about the nuance, right? Once you get to this stage, you start nuancing it. So now I come back here. I get a little bit of a pinkish color. I'm still in gouache. I still have my gouache brush. So now I'm going to give him a little bit of red underneath his eyes. A little bit of red on his nose. Because that's where blood flow happens. A little bit right here. And since I don't have anything marked as a transparency or as a reference layer, 
you need to obviously be careful of where you put your color. Now, if I were to go ahead and do something called lock transparency, which is alpha lock. So now everything inside, I'm good. See, nothing will go out. Okay. Just got a little bit right here because he's blushing. He's blushing. He's so cute. Oh my gosh. He's so cute. Okay. So now, um, go back to the eyeballs. Okay, we get the eyes. So now I'm like, okay, so what color can I make his eyes? So I'm going to go ahead and select. I'm going to make that a little bit darker and a little bit greener. I'm still in my gouache brush. Because I love texture. Okay. And I'm going to get a little bit of blue because, again, we're on this particular layer that has all of this paint on it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a light blue right about there. I'm going to make that brush smaller. And when the light hits up here, it's going to hit directly. And we're going to get a little bit of eye shine on that black right there. Not much because the black's going to try and absorb everything. But we do have some reflected light right there. See that? Just that little bit makes a huge difference. So we're going to go ahead and hit that again. We're going to bring it up. We're going to bring it right here and right there. Again, over on the edge, the light hits, and it's going to be brighter right there. Okay. All right. So um, what do we want to do next? Let's do a little background element. Um, since he's outside, we'll do like a light blue. Okay. And since I've already got my, my gouache brush, I'm gonna make it big and just have it kind of fade up. And Procreate, again, as an artist tool is wonderful. The pressure sensitivity of the Apple Pencil, I think is, man, if they ever had a computer that had the Apple Pencil that was its proprietary interface tool, you know, like a big screen that the Apple Pencil worked on for the Mac, I think I'd be all in. Okay. I always like zooming out to see contrast. It's not exactly where I want to be, but, but for the demo, I think it's decent. So I'm going to come back all the way up here. I'm going to use uh, this again as the reference. I'm going to come all the way back up here. I'm going to use this. I'm going to go to, I'm going to see what color dodge. Okay. That's just for that. So I'm going to go back. Let's go down using a reference layer. We're going to go ahead and turn that off and I'm going to come back and I'm going to drag this layer. Oh, whenever you drag layers, if you're interested, all you got to do is press, hold, drag down. And then whenever you put it on top of that particular layer mask, it's going to automatically treat it as a layer mask. Okay. So we're going to do, I'm going to change the color a little bit, maybe to a red hue. Cause I want some, I want some rim lighting here. Maybe there's something on the back of him. You know, over on the side. Just something slight to give it a little bit of warmth here and there. It helps out a lot. So that is the introduction to Procreate, um, a very good program for use on the iPad and a great resource for illustrators and artists, not only as an illustration tool, um, but there's so many tutorials online, guys. There's classes, tutorials. I just wanted to show you how I use it. I wanted to show you that it is a valid uh, artist tool, that it has the capability to do incredible illustrations, that the brush library 
Uh, you can utilize Photoshop brushes, you can buy brushes, and what makes Procreate so attractive in the marketplace is I believe the price on the App Store is $15.99 for a lifetime license, which means you buy it and you're consistently getting upgrades and updates um, from Procreate. And I don't know how long that's going to last, but the reality is, is uh, right now, you know, this program as it sits is a very gr good option for those of you who are looking to get into um, a drawing program for inexpensive that has professional quality and level tools in it um, that you can, you know, start an art career. Um, you know, one of the things that you have to also remember is the iPad, the cost of the iPad. iPad Pro 12.9 is about $1,000, and then you end up throwing in that uh, $15.99 app. So, you know, there's this that happens. You know, iPads are expensive. It's a tool. As a tool, you know, you have to make sure and understand that it's just that. It's not going to do the work for you. And, you know, at the end of the day, you really have to weigh that. Do I think that those people that are in school should go out and buy an iPad Pro and start toying around? Probably not. There's other options that are cheaper. You know, your your XP pens, your Huion's, your, you know, your laptops, your surfaces, all of those devices are also going to be really good options for those who are looking to get into the illustration field and, uh, you know, start doing digital art. The iPad is a luxury item, in my opinion. You know, if it was your only computer, I think you would find it hard to use um, as a uh, all-in-one because it's not an all-in-one. It, um, it is a device primarily used for uh, a specific task. You know, it's a very fast because it does one thing at a time. You know, people compare surfaces to iPads, and, and I'm guilty of doing the same thing. But the, the iPad is successful because it does one thing at a time extremely good. And, uh, you, know, you know, this particular review was saying a, a, a review of Procreate from an artist standpoint. And do I think it'll work? Heck yeah. Um, whether or not it works for you and how you work and your work dynamic... That's going to be a completely different story, but it does do good art, and it uh, it does it uh, in a way that is not too taxing on the brain, and you can learn Procreate pretty easily, you know, and you don't have to have extra peripherals everywhere and, and stuff like that. So anyway, that's what I wanted to show you guys today. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start messing around a little bit. Let me get the add feature here. Again, messing around with those layer transparency really gives you the option similar to Photoshop, to going in and creating these incredible illustrations that have, you know, really good art dynamic. Here, I'm trying to draw here. You know, I love that. I love that gouache brush. It's just so nice. You can go in. I mean, I, I mean I'm barely touching the surface. Such a fun tool. So anyway, thank you guys. Like and subscribe. Please share. Grow on the channel. So hopefully uh, you guys are on board and stick with me. Uh, definitely posted more artwork all the time. And, um, you know, we'll definitely get better uh, at the video production as time goes on and as time permits. So thank you guys and we'll see you soon. Bye.